So I think ESMO 2022 has been really exciting in the fact that it's it's gotten abstracts and specifically addressed the very challenging question of what to do when a patient with hormone receptor positive HER2 negative metastatic breast cancer develops endocrine resistance. Uh, that's been very challenging for community oncologists because what do you do that's optimal in that particular setting? So this year we saw three abstracts that were presented at the mini oral uh, abstract session. Uh, the two of them dealt with uh, oral SIRDs. The promise of oral SIRDs um, is that can it be better than fulvestrant, uh, which has been our traditional SIRD that we're using in the clinic. Fulvestrant is an intramuscular injection, so more inconvenient to actually give ba a patients. And at least in preclinical models, oral SIRDs seem to be doing better than a fulvestrant. Last year at San Antonio in 2021, we did see the results of the Emerald trial that looked at Trent. I'm not very good at pronouncing these <laughs> oral SIRDs. Um, and they, they were able to actually show in a randomized phase three clinical trial where patients who had endocrine resistant disease randomized to receive either the oral SIRD or a uh, physician choice of endocrine therapy, there was a significant benefit uh, to uh, getting the oral SIRD, specifically so in the ESR1 cohort. So this year at ESMO 2022, we saw two abstracts looking at two other oral SIRDs. These were two phase two trials. You had the AMIRA trial as well as the Acelera trial, looking at two very different uh, oral SIRDs, both studies very similar in design to what we saw at, uh, in the Emerald study randomizing patients who had endocrine resistant disease to either getting physician choice of endocrine therapy or uh, the oral CERT. Um, unfortunately, in terms of looking at the entire cohort, uh, it didn't look like there was any difference in terms of progression-free survival between physician choice of endocrine therapy versus the oral CERDs. However, when you specifically looked at the ESR1 population, there was a strong trend favoring the group of patients who were getting the oral CERT. So again, I don't think uh, that we're there yet in terms of using oral CERDs in the clinic in that endocrine resistance setting. I think we do need more data. I think that the, the clinical trials need to be better designed in terms of focusing on patients who've got ESR1 mutation. I also think that looking at patients with only ESR1 mutation as a mechanism of endocrine resistant is something that we should not be doing. We should be looking at other mechanisms of endocrine resistance because we're obviously not being able to treat everyone appropriately. So again, we, we need to look at other mechanisms that could potentially help patients in the future. The third abstract actually looked at, an, at a third generation of um, uh, oral SERMs, selective estrogen receptor modulator, and they specifically looked at lazoxifen. Very interesting study, it was the Elaine 1 study uh, that took patients specifically this time who had an ESR1 mutation, endocrine resistant, hormone receptor positive HER2 negative metastatic breast cancer who progressed on an aromatase inhibitor and a CDK4-6 inhibitor. These patients were randomized to receive either lazoxifen or fulvestrin. So here, in a very good study, which I think a cleaner study, because all patients had progressed on a CDK4-6 inhibitor, all patients had an ESR1 mutation, and the control arm of the trial looked at only fulvestrin rather than physician choice of endocrine therapy. Now here, the primary endpoint of the study was progression-free survival. Although not statistically significant, there was a strong trend suggesting that patients who were getting lazoxifen were doing a lot better, had an improved PFS, although not statistically significant, compared to patients who were receiving fulvestrant. In an exploratory analysis, again, very interesting, when they looked at patients um, who had ctDNA measured at various time points, how well did lazoxifen compare to fulvestrin clear uh, ESR1 mutation uh, levels using ctDNA uh, methodology. And what, they, what the investigators found was that the ctDNA levels uh, in terms of ESR1 was being cleared a lot better with lazoxifen versus uh, fulvestrant. And more interestingly, lazoxifen also cleared those hard to treat ESR1 mutations. So again, a very interesting study. Um, I'm looking forward to a larger scale study that will prove 
uh, whether lazoxifen is a good monotherapy in patients with endocrine resistance. But I think going forward, monotherapy in the endocrine resistance setting is not where I think we're going to be at. I think we're going to be looking at combination uh, therapies. And lazoxifen has a second interesting trial that was presented last year, uh, this year at ASCO, in fact, ASCO 2022, the ELAINE 2 trial that looked at the combination of azoxifen and abemaciclib. Very interesting results. And it also builds on the growing body of evidence that perhaps you can use CDK4-6 inhibitor beyond progression. So I think that endocrine resistance space is, is a space that we should be looking out for. A lot of interesting data coming out, a lot of interesting endocrine therapeutic agents being investigated in that realm, but it's a complex area. We need to be looking at a whole spectrum of endocrine uh, resistant mechanisms of action. We need to be targeting them appropriately. And I think combination therapy is where we're going to be at in that specific realm.